atmosphere. The music is always lively. Doesn't matter what your worries are, just come on in, we'll take care of the rest. <laughs> my dad had a restaurant in Cuba back in 1950 and my mom helped out. They came to the U.S. in 1970, so he found this place, opened it up about eight years ago. The recipes that we use here, they're from mom and dad. Our food is, is not hot, spicy. We use a lot of spices, but it's not spicy hot. It won't burn your tongue off. And we also have a, a Brazilian bartender that makes the best Brazilian caipirinhas in the world. I wanted to have a restaurant that was different from every other place that you go to. I want a place where I can sit down, just relax. I had a bad day at the office. I want to have a couple of drinks. And you really want the people to feel good. You have to have love. And that's what we do here. So Maureen, you were telling us that everyone feels like family at Cafe La Guardia. Tell us why you chose it. You know, I think when you go to Cafe La Guardia, it reminds you of the Paladares in Cuba, which are actually home family restaurants that people are allowed to open and open to tourists. And you feel as if you're in someone's home, that you're getting great food that's been prepared with, with love and with passion. And you really just feel comfortable and you feel at home for however long you decide to stay. And that's why I love it. There's just no replacement for having the owner on the floor. Definitely. The owner is on the floor and his mom is there and he introduces <laughs> to you to mom. Get on mom's good side though. And, uh, <laughs> well, I'll, 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 I'll take one there. Yeah. We, when my wife and I went in, we were. It was quite. A, it was a Friday night. It was quite crowded. We yeah. sat right by the kitchen in a dark corner with a two seater, and you could tell that mother was watching a struggle. Look at the menus. Mother said something. And we were moved immediately. We would have been okay wow. sitting there, but mother was watching. So it was like we were in her house. That's so great. I agree with you. Yeah, and it is nice because when you walk in, the, the owner greets you, and then later on he comes by. As you're leaving, he tells you a little bit about the story. Uh, he's got pictures there, and when you walk in, you walk into this luscious, riveted leather couches. Isn't it gorgeous? And you can it's stay so there for a while. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You could sit there with your friends in the rich Corinthian leather, you know, <laughs> yeah. that type of thing. <laughs> you can and have, have drink appetizers and, and margaritas. Yeah, I don't know how they get the, the Cuban rum in, but uh, I had a good time right before dinner. <laughs> and then you can sit there and just stay <laughs> there. You don't even have to stay for dinner if you don't want to. Senora LaGuardia, the mother, she's fabulous. I mean, yeah. uh, the night I was there like a while ago and they had live music. Oh, and neat. so Senora LaGuardia is like running around and she's like the bouncer, you yeah. know? And she's like making she's sure <laughs> everyone's she's happy. She's the boss rabbit, I'm telling you. <laughs> And you know what I love too is the fact that I'm, I guess I'm just a proponent of neighborhood restaurants, whether or not they're in my neighborhood or not. I think it's yes. wonderful to go to these mom and pop or family owned places where, as you say, the owner's on the premise and you really feel like you're getting, it's almost like being hugged and loved while yes. you're eating and I think that's great. Well, one of the things I noticed was there was a lot of happy faces. I mean, we didn't even yeah. eat yet and mm -hmm. we saw lots of smiling, lots of laughing. <laughs> Now, uh, I know we you know Juan had rum. What did yeah. you indulge in beverage? We had a ma uh, margarita. And the, one of the things I think that could add to it would if they had some maybe Caribbean wines or South American wines, mm. something that would mm. maybe blend with the culture and the food. Well, I know for a fact that they don't make wine in the Caribbeans, but they do make a great mojito. Oh, they sure do. Okay. <laughs> I most certainly had to yeah. try that because I figured, okay, this is the standard. I need to have a mojito here because I've had them in Cuba and they are incredible. And here, they're wonderfully fresh with the fresh mint leaves. And it's just, it was really great. And it went well with the food I had. I had a very spicy, hot, tropical heat wave, polla a la diabla. And so it was very, very spicy and it was perfect. Now, is Cuban food generally spicy for you? Uh, it's not for me, but I don't know. I don't think that mm -hmm. Cuban food is all that spicy. Mm -hmm. well, Cuban food is a mix between the Spanish mm -hmm. influence and also the local, like you said, mm -hmm. the, the Caribbean influence. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. rice is a huge oh, issue. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the arroz con uh, gandules, I think mm -hmm. the little pigeon peas. Yes. Oh my God, it's incredible. And it's so, it's so good and you get such a nice portion. I mean, I'm from Argentina, but it's sad how little I know mm -hmm. from Cuban food. Mm -hmm. I know Cubans party well. But I didn't know anything about it. Oh, it's from the rum? Yeah, that's good. Oh, yeah. But uh, the, that uh, Brazilian snapper mm -hmm. that they've got, that daily flown in fish, it's formidable. It, uh, Carlos told me they only fly in 30 pounds. Mm -hmm. And when it's gone, it's gone. 
usually when I go, I get the chicken and garlic sauce because I just love garlic. And I love, you know, the peppers and the spices and all of that sort of thing. And then um, the dessert. We actually had something that's probably not typically Cuban. It's lemon sorbet. It's this huge lemon that they somehow get into this glass. They put this fabulous sorbet in there and then top, top it with the little top of the lemon. And it's so refreshing after you've had this wonderfully flavored food. So. Yeah. Now, Mike, were you telling me that you're not really an adventurous diner, so to speak, when it comes to certain Sometimes, yeah. types of food? Did sure. you find the food okay for you? It was, it was good. Again, getting back to what Juan said, the happy issues <laughs> it really yeah. made it. I mean, the food could have been even marginal. The food was great, but the food could have even been marginal. Mm -hmm. And I still would have walked away with a pleasant feeling because the attentiveness, the atmosphere, and the food was just, just everything was just A-OK. -okay. I, I really liked it. And I think that that's the thing, too, about going to restaurants. It's not just the food, but it's right. the culture that you embrace. And so many times, you know, obviously with Americans, we're not allowed to go to Cuba. So this is a wonderful taste of Cuba mm -hmm. in Chicago that you can go and you kind of feel like you're experiencing some aspect of that culture that we think we know, so, you know, know about. So it's, it's, it's fun. Just great people. Yeah, I really think Really so. fun, Definitely. happy, yeah. life-loving people. Mm -hmm. yep. So great. All right, Maureen, well, this was your uh, selection. Give us a summary. I would say if you want a delicious taste of Cuba and an atmosphere that allows you to linger and be family for as long as you want, check out Cafe La Guardia. Juan de Leo? I really like it. I love the snapper. The snapper is phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> I have to try the snapper next time. And there's, it's, it's flown in fish, daily flown in fish. I love that. Yes. A happy crowd, attentive staff, um, easy to get to, easy to park. Everything about it was very, very simple and comfortable. Well, you can find the comfy couches at Cafe LaGuardia, 2111 West Armitage, 773-862-5996. They're open for lunch and dinner every day of the week. Reservations are accepted, and the average check without drinks is $18 per person.